So turns on red. You must come to a complete stop at a red traffic light. You may they you may then turn right unless no turns on red sign is posted. So sometimes you get to a to a red light and there's a right next on the pole usually on the light pole next to you there, there's a sign that says no turn on red and then you can't turn on red. You must first give the right of way to pedestrians and other vehicles. You may turn left on red only if you are turning from a one-way street onto another one-way street. Wow, that doesn't happen around here, but I suppose it happens somewhere. The same rules that apply for right turns apply to left turns on a one-way street. U-turns. A U-turn is a tight left turn that puts you in the opposite direction. Where do we do U-turns, anyway? In your 99? Yeah, we do. If you see a sign like this, then you can't do U-turns. You can make a U-turn if your path is clear and it is safe to do so. You cannot make a U-turn if there is a no U-turn sign posted, like this one right here. You may only make a U-turn from the lane closest to the center line. So you can't take a U-turn like you can't like like when we take a U-turn at the 99, yeah. we always go to the middle lane, right, and yeah. then turn. You don't like cut all the way across the other lanes, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? What? So like you don't turn like from the right-hand lane across another another car, right? Yeah. So you always turn from the middle lane. Make sure that you have enough room to complete the turn. Do not create a hazard for oncoming vehicles. Turn on the middle lane. Right. So it says, do not make you turns at the crest of a hill near a curve or any place where you or other drivers cannot see 500 feet away. So like if you're coming up to the top of a hill, you shouldn't take a U-turn at the top of a hill. Because why? Because your car might fall off. No, no, no. The reason is because people coming up the hill yeah. won't be able to see you maybe because they're coming up the hill and all of a sudden they get over the top of the hill and it's like, oh my God, there's a car turning in front of me. So so you should not make a U-turn basically at the top of a hill. The same thing goes for a curve in the road either because someone could come around the corner and say, oh my gosh, there's a car in front of me. So do not make a U-turn any place where other drivers cannot see, see you from 500 feet away. Left turns... That's a long way, 500 feet. Left turns from the center lanes. On some two-way roads, a center lane may be marked as a common left turn lane to be used by vehicles on both directions. Have you ever seen one of those before? I know where there's one. Do you know where there's one? Where? Over in Plainville near the McDonald's. There's a place where, and they show, they show a picture over here. So cars going on this direction and cars going on this direction can both go into this middle lane yeah. and the cars in this direction turn this way and the cars coming from this lane go this way. So it's like a place where people... So the cars in this lane go that way? Or, well, if you're coming from this direction, yeah. you pull into here and then take a left-hand turn. Or, if you're coming from this direction, you can pull in and then go this way. Isn't that confusing? So that and that. So anyone who's taking a left turn either going this way or this way. Like if you want to go over here from here, yeah. Or if you want to go over here from here, both of you pull into the middle. And it's about to tell you the rules about that. Okay. Left turns from center lanes. On some two-way roads, a center lane may be marked as a common left turn lane to be used by vehicles in both directions. You may not travel in a center turning lane, right? Can you just drive down here? No, drive no. where? Down this middle turn lane? No. No. Three-point turns. When there is not enough room for a U-turn, you may consider a three-point turn. This will put you in the opposite direction. This turn should be used when all the following conditions are met. The street is narrow. There is good visibility. There are no public driveways to turn into. The traffic is light, meaning there isn't many other car there aren't many other cars. The turn is legal. And finally, there are no other options. Following are the steps for a three-point turn. <clears throat> Position your car as close as possible to the right edge of the curb. Signal a left turn. Check for traffic and pedestrians in both directions, including your blind spot. Wait until you have a 20 to 30 second gap to complete the turn. Move slowly and turn the steering wheel quickly to the left. This will bring the vehicle perpendicular to the street 
about two feet from the curve. Come to a stop. Turn your steering wheel fully to the right. Check for traffic in both directions. I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you this tomorrow. I'll drive the car like this and show you what to talk about, including your blind spot. Shift the car into reverse. Start backing up while looking over your right shoulder. Back into the opposite curb, stopping just before the curb. Check again for vehicles in both directions, including your blind spot. Signal a left turn. Shift into drive and accelerate to the proper speed. <clears throat> right of way rules. Right of way rules. Right of way rules help drivers handle traffic situations not controlled by signs or signals. These rules are based on safety and courtesy. They do not give you any rights. Remember, the right of way is something you give, not take. If other driver does not follow these rules, you must always give the right of way. This section describes many right of way rules. Other rules, like giving the right of way to emergency vehicles, are covered later in the chapter. Pedestrians. What's a pedestrian, anyway? A person who's walking. Right. You must always yield to pedestrians who are in a roadway. Also note these rules concerning pedestrians. If you are stopped at a traffic light that turns green, you must yield to the pedestrian already in the crosswalk. So what does that mean? So if you're at a stoplight and the light turns green and someone's walking across the intersection, do you, do you start driving? Just wait for them. Yeah, you wait for them. You yield. That means you let them go first. When turning, look for pedestrians. Pedestrians have the right of way in using a sidewalk or crossing or crossing a driveway or an alley. So I feel like you're turning into your driveway. Yeah. You have to look and make sure there's no one walking in the street. Like because you're turning into your driveway. Yeah, because they have the right of way. Like if you're trying to pull into a driveway and there's a person walking across the driveway, you have to wait for them to walk across, right? You don't just yeah. say pull into them, right? That makes sense, right? Yeah. Always yield to visually impaired blind people crossing a street. <clears throat> you must remain stopped until the person has safely crossed. <laughs> Do not honk or wave the person on. Never pass another vehicle which is stopped. Blind pedestrians may use a white cane or a guide dog. The white cane law states that a driver must come to a complete stop when a blind pedestrian is crossing a street. Intersections not controlled by signs or signals. Slow down at an uncontrolled intersection. Look left and right for oncoming traffic and proceed in a way if the way is clear. However, you must yield the right of way to any vehicle that has entered the intersection from your right or is coming from your right. Look for traffic coming from the left. Even though you may have the legal right of way, you must Make sure the other driver is yielding before you proceed. That's interesting. Yeah. But if you come to a, some intersection that has no stop signs or no signals or anything, if all the cars get there, if two cars get there at the same time, the one that actually has the right of way is the one that's to the right. Oh. So, so like let's say you're driving up Eden Park Drive and you got, but there's there are stop signs there. But let's say there are no stop signs, and there was a car that was coming and you got up to Strachan's house. And there's a car coming basically from Farrakhan's house up, yeah. and you both get there at the same time. Yeah. The car that's at the right, which is the car coming from Farrakhan's, has the right to go first. Oh. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't necessarily know that. Like if you drive up here and the other person drives, that person drives. So if these two cars got here at the same time, yeah. which car has the right to go first? That's right. This one. Four way stop. At an intersection with stop signs in all directions, you must yield the right of way to another vehicle that has already come to a full stop. So if, if there's a four way stop signs, the car that got there, this makes sense, the car that got there first gets to go first. A vehicle directly to your right that has stopped at the same time as you. So that's the same rule again. If the, all the, the, the two cars get there at the same time, the one that's to the right gets to go first. Four-way stop intersections can cause confusion. Try to make eye contact with the drivers of the other vehicles to judge their intentions and avoid accidents. At four-way stop signs, 
Vehicles must go in the order they stopped. The first to stop is the next to go. If in doubt, give the right of way to the driver to your right. Turning left. When making any left turn, you must first yield the right of way to any oncoming vehicles. That makes sense, right? What? So if you're turning left at an intersection and there's cars coming straight through, should you pull in front of them or let them go first? So, so what are you talking about? So if you're coming up to to this, here, here's, a, here's an example. Yeah. Yeah, this car is coming up and he yeah. wants to go this way, right? Yeah. And there's a car coming this way. This way? Like through here. Yeah. Does this guy pull in front of him or does this other car get to go first? This other car gets to go first. Yes. So, so when you're taking a left-hand turn, you have to give the right of way or yield to or let this person go. Oh. Oncoming traffic, which means cars come in the other direction. Oh. Vehicles already in the intersection, like okay. this car is already in the intersection. Okay. Pedestrians or bicycles crossing your intended path. What? So people that are walking and riding bikes in front of you, you, should, you shouldn't pull in front of them and cut them off, right? you got to let them go first. Private roads, <laughs> driveways, and unpaved roads. When entering paved uh, thoroughfare from a pri private road, a driveway or an unpaved road, you must stop. You must then give the right of way to pedestrians, bicyclists, or vehicles on the road you are entering. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. So by law, when you get to like the end of our driveway, you have to stop. What? Before, before you get onto the road, yeah. if you're leaving like a, a, a driveway or a private road yeah. or a dirt road or whatever, yeah. even though there's no stop sign, yeah. you have to stop. So when we come to the end of our driveway, we always just drive out, right? Yeah. But it, Actually, what we're supposed to do is you're supposed to stop. At a driveway? Yeah, you're supposed to pretend there's a stop sign there. I didn't, oh. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So you have to pretend there's a stop sign. Or like when Grandpa's coming out of his driveway, yeah. with, what's he supposed to do? Stop. Is, how about if you're coming out of a uh, Walmart parking lot? Got to stop. Yeah. How about if you're coming off the dirt road up in Maine? Stop. Yeah. So you got to stop at the end of these kind of roads. Thoroughways, or throughways, sorry. On a designated highway, you must yield the right of way to traffic on the th on the throughway before you turn. Intersections, intersection of single or two lane road and multiple lane roads. If you are on a single or two lane road and come to an intersection with a divided highway or roadway with three or more lanes, you must yield the right of way. That's interesting. What? I didn't realize this either. Usually the stop sign's there, so this would be yeah. unlikely to happen. But if you're on some road, yeah. like a single lane road or a two lane road, yeah. that comes to an intersection with a divided roadway yeah. uh, with three or more lanes, then you must yield the right of way. The people on the big road have the right of way. The people on the big road have what? get to keep going through and you have to wait for them. Usually the oh, stops like a road like that. You know what this is a perfect example of that is? Yeah. Is you know like where uh you know like where Smith and Nephew is? Yeah. On Forbes Boulevard? Yeah. It's a big road yeah. that Smith and Nephew's on. Yeah. Well there's little roads that cross yeah. that. Yeah. And if there were to be no stop sign there or whatever, yeah. or no stop signals, then the people on the little road yeah. that go that connect that, that go across the big road yeah. have to have to let the people on the big road go first. Really? But on all, everyone I've ever seen, like up in that industrial park, there's always uh, stop signals there, stoplights. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a non-issue. But, but if it were to have that, then the people on the big road get the right away. So you talk about that like what? This is a rotary. Yeah. Where, have you ever seen rotaries before? No. Sure you have. How about down at Cape Cod? Yeah, I've seen yeah. those. So that, what are you talking about? No, I'm talking about rotaries. Yeah. Rotaries are much more common in Massachusetts than in other parts of the country. A rotary is an intersection of roads coming together from several directions. It allows you to continue through without stopping at a stop sign or at a traffic signal. There are yield signs at the entrance to a rotary. There is a physical barrier, the central island, in the center that forces traffic to travel around it. Big rotaries are designed to handle traffic traveling at up to 40 miles per hour. Do you have 40 on those? Yeah. Or I'm, higher? I've never seen one that big, but... Traffic, rotary traffic rules. Traffic travel counter... Tra traffic 
travels counterclockwise in rotary. So that means when you get on a rotary, you go in the opposite direction a clock yeah. goes. Right? Is it like a traffic rotary? Were you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about traffic rotary. So traffic travels counterclockwise. So when you get to a rotary, you, you travel in this direction, like this. So can you do the thing again? So you're coming in, Yeah. you don't go this way. Yeah. You come in and you go around in this direction. And you could just keep driving in a circle if you wanted. Yeah. And never get off. But usually you, you, you know, you're getting off somewhere. So traffic travels uh, counterclockwise on rotary. Always yield the right of way to vehicles already in the rotary. So that means if you come up to a rotary and there's cars and yeah. you can't get on, do you just barrel in there? No. Or do you wait for them until there's a spot for you? Wait for them until there's a spot for me. Okay. Unless told differently, differently by signs or police officers. And yield the way to pedestrians. Use your turn signals in the same way as any other at any other intersection. Travel through the rotary, and when you are ready to exit, use your right turn signal. So let's say you're going, or you want to go over here on this rotary, right? Yeah. And you start over here, you go, I got to stop and then wait for a spot for me to get on. Oh, here's a spot for me. Blinker, blinker, ding, 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 ding. And then you drive off. That's how you do it. All right.